All right, welcome to Block Party. I'm your host, Mike Wall. Thank you as always for listening. Subscribe on our YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash process to perform. You check me out at Mike Wall 68 on uh, Twitter, process to perform on Instagram. So today I'm excited. We're going to check out some NFL guard play. Um, I got a couple conventions coming up, putting together some tape, and I started watching a guy that I hadn't really seen since 2019 when he got drafted in the first round by the Atlanta Falcons out of Boston College, Chris Lindstrom. Um, I was doing a couple. I was doing some work for them at the time, and they had just brought in two first round picks. Actually, him and the right tackle, kid out of Boston College, kid. I always think of Chris Snee, ridiculous strong. Um, when we talk about guard play in the NFL and like what it really takes to be an elite level guard, and I'm just not, I'm talking about guys that aren't. This guy is a great athlete, but let's face it, six foot four, three hundred seven pounds. There's a lot of six foot four, three hundred seven, three hundred ten, three hundred fifteen pound guys in the National Football League. So what makes you different? Okay, we talk about four things. I have a, everyone has a blocking system, right? We talk about pre-contact and post-con or you know post-confrontation. <clears throat> My blocking system: prime and pummel, pre-contact, prime, step and bend. That's your initial footwork, initial body position, pre-contact, and then we talk about pummel. We talk about target, hat and hand placement and roll, hip placement, feet chase, feet chase hips, etc. This guy does the basic stuff and something we always talk about. This guy does the basic stuff at a high, high level. I went through probably six weeks of games just literally randomly picking out different series because he's one of those kind of players where every single series he's doing something well. And I don't base things on whether or not the play went well. As we all know, we talk about process here on Block Party because process to perform is what we're all about. You look at this guy – Line up at right guard. And we're going to have, it's just really, really simple stuff. So they're sliding to the right. Center is going to come over. They have a two eye, and we're going to hit 55 in the hole. I just, again, this is easy, but not everybody's doing it. You have to check that two eye. You have to put your hand out. You have to put a post foot up so you can't get picked. They can't run stunts. And then you have to attack, punch, and extend on the linebacker to keep him off your body. One thing that Chris Lindstrom does very, very well and what saves him when his feet aren't perfect is he does a great job of punching and extending. We always talk about snapping and extending your arms, keep the defensive player away from your body. He does it as well as anybody in the National Football League. Very simple. Look, this sounds easy, but it's got to be repetitive. He's got to be able to absorb that 2 eye if they try to run a game. And then we always have this punch and extension with Lindstrom enabling him to kind of react and throw guys out the barn wherever he gets the opportunity. This guy likes to finish. He finishes in the run and the pass game. Uh, I cut this clip off early. I just wanted to show he does a very good job of marrying, whether it's whether it's a double team with a tackle on the backside, whether it's a B gap, or a B block, a deuce block, whether it's an ace block or, or a backside A with the center. They do always, they do such a good job. This is a lot of this is coaching with all the players around him. But they get hip to hip, they get shoulder pad to shoulder pad, and he always drives and tries to finish. This is what I was talking about when we talk about like a, a, a deuce look. So right here, a lot of teams are going to ace this. So he's going to be blocking with 67, the center, back to the linebacker. They're going to look at this as this four eye. They're going to call it a three, and they're going to deuce block this. What a lot of players do is they take a really, really – dramatic step inside and they have a hard time getting their right foot back on that red line. You have to create the inside bumper. You have to stay square to the line of scrimmage and you're really helping your right tackle do, do all of the pushing by creating that bumper on the inside, not getting pushed down, not getting washed down. He does an, an elite level job. And again, this is a basic fundamental of the sport. Not a lot of players are doing it at this level even the National Football League. So good first step. Second step, you see they're just married hip to hip. Drive, 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 drive. Now he sees he can make that hard left turn, have a car crash. Great finish. Again, play doesn't work out. Really not interested in that. This is what happens if you watch tape. The play, the outcome of the play really doesn't matter. The process of how we go about our business really is what matters and determines whether or not you're a good player. Can you win your 1v1 matchups? Can you win your double teams? Can you pass off on the line? Same thing here. You have a wide three technique. The tendency for most guards is to take a 12-inch step in with your left foot, and it's going to allow that three technique to wash you down. He doesn't do that at all. Comes back and gets on that rail, takes that train track back up. The biggest thing here, if we put that red line back up, 
is he's going to get his right foot back on that red line. One, two, and stay square. Drive, 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 and then get off on that linebacker. Just a phenomenal job of getting hip to hip. I We talk about it all the time. You see so many guys um, where the tackle and the guard are actually pushing against one another, right? Because the, the guard steps down too far, then the tackle steps ha aren't, aren't commiserate with the, the footwork of the guard, and they kind of end up fighting across each other's face. Love what this guy's doing. So just very, very simple. A lot of players, so he's coming down on a two-eye. He's going to be blocking by himself, pass protection. So all you have to do is take a small six-inch step here, get that second step down, and have a good base so you can punch and extend, get this guy off, stop his initial momentum, okay? If your center, as long as your center doesn't bail on you to the inside, you don't have an inside rail necessarily, but you don't have to jump inside and worry about getting beat because otherwise, if you do that, a lot of guys will take a huge step, and then they have to open up when that guy jumps outside. Chris does a good job of staying in the same stagger position. So a little step inside, one, two, pop, and he gets right there. You see that he got to punch and extend. You see that he's in control. The defensive tackles tried to wipe those hands away, but he got stopped. So the defensive tackles' momentum is not where it needs to be. He's in a bad body position. Chris is in a great body position, and it allows him to now finish off this block, makes it a very, very easy block, almost at the line of scrimmage. And one thing I love about this guy, you don't see this every, every, every with every player in the National Football League. He gets down the field and he finishes all the time. We have a, a slide to the right. I don't know if they call it Roger, Robert, whatever, but center's going to the two eye. So we have the two or the two, the two, uh, the two or the two eye to linebacker to the defensive uh, end. What I wanted to highlight here because we just saw this with the left guard. Um, uh, for the Minnesota Vikings and Dexter Lawrence and Dexter Lawrence just taking advantage of the center because they weren't being physical enough at the line of scrimmage when they had the opportunity to take a shot and stop momentum with that two eye knowing that the center's coming with you or that shade knowing that the center's coming with you in these slide situations. He does a great job. And I know this is a, this is kind of a short set play, but he does a great job of just taking the edge or taking that, that spine out of the defender, stopping momentum. And now it's an easy job for the center as he slides over. Still in a great position here. So one, two, bang. Hands inside. One thing you'll notice this guy, technician, hands are always inside. Very, very simple, basic component of the sport. Mike Flanagan was one of those guys that did it better than anybody on our team in the Green Bay Packers. This guy's phenomenal at it. But you just take, you see the head snap back. You're punching, extending. You get that snap. Now you've stopped momentum. Now, if Cam Jordan wants to go inside, I know we're trying to, I think McCray's trying to, to uh, cut out here, number 76. But if Cam Jordan tries to go inside, if he beats him, we're still in good position here. Like, we haven't sold out. He's got great body position. He's punching hips to hands. He extends this guy. Now, 67's job is easy, and he can release out. You see at the end there, we get the snap. One more time. And he's just in a great position to help inside out with the tackle. Now, a lot of guys are running play action under center. A lot of guys are running out of shotgun. Obviously, with the way that <clears throat> the Atlanta Falcons run their offense, you know, with, with in either quarterback, Mariota or this quarterback, they're going to run a lot of shotgun play action pass. And because they run out of pistol a lot and they have a fullback in the game right now, it is very easy to um, get kind of comfortable, I think, as, as a guard. What... Lindstrom does incredibly well. So right here you have a four, you have Cam Jordan who's one of the best, you know, defensive ends of his generation. Very, very heady player. He has to go sell play action pass with run. Now it's like, you know, Mr. Miyagi karate on the left side of the road. Okay. Karate on the right side of the road. Okay. Karate down the middle squish like grape, right? What that means is very simply, if you're not, you're either all in or you just pass it. You don't go halfway into a, a a four eye block on a play action pass against a guy like Cam Jordan, you will get beat. Lindstrom does a great job of gaining ground with his first step, showing a body presence and position with his hips and his hands, with his pad level, that he is coming off to engage in a run demeanor and stops Cam Jordan dead in his tracks. And you'll see here he comes off the ball, one, two, up and lift. And now you see Cam's looking for the ball. He doesn't know where it is, he thinks he's reading run. He now he reads it's past, it's too late, right? He would stop momentum. Once you stop momentum, if you're still in good body position, your hips are low, your feet have you, you have a good base, 
now the rest of the game comes like almost like playing basketball, right? You just have to stay in front of that defender. There's some different ways to do that. But that initial confrontation, being able to stop that, being able to run at your defender, to be confident inside out that you're not going to get beat because you're selling run and you're all in. That's a big deal. Not, not a lot of guys can do it as well as Chris is. Same thing here. I just highlighted his inside foot. He's going to reach that four technique on a play action look. Again, they're out of the shotgun pistol formation. And we always talk about gaining leverage. When we talk about our step category of our of our blocking system, it is can you gain leverage? Are you in a better position after your first and second step than you were when you started the movement? Are you in a better position to block your defensive player, your defender, after your first and second step than you were when you started the movement? You see Chris here, takes a great first step right there. Second step in the ground. Demeanor's right at him, inside out. He's got him locked out again. And as soon as he gets locked out, he's able to sit. He's in a great base position. He's got that hips to hands. When I say hips to hands for coaches out there, people that are trying to learn how to pass block, how to engage defenders, you come from an athletic position. This is the finished position. So your chest is up and your hips have already been engaged because you've punched out. We don't want to start here. We don't, we're not waddlers. We don't want to pop up and waddle. We want to roll out as athletes because we train like athletes. We train like everybody else on the football team. Defensive tackles, linebackers, running backs. Everybody trains to be an athlete, including offensive linemen. I see too many drills on Twitter, too many drills on YouTube where guys are being taught now still to pop up, keep their hands in tight. They'll just waddle out with a med ball or something, and then they might start running. Away. It makes absolutely no sense. Be an athlete. Be in an athletic position, shoulders over knees, over toes, pre-contact. When you pop, you punch and extend. You get that person away from your body. Defenders want to smell your breath before they make moves. They're attacking elbows and armpits. You keep them away because you're buying time. You're buying reaction time in the event that you lose and that you wipe off your hands. He does a great job here. Extension, extension, extension. Always extended. Always extended. He's under control. The guy wipes his hands off. He just keeps extending. You think about the same idea. We're, we're going to reach block, first step, and he just gets great leverage position by winning with your first step, tacking landmarks, winning with hands inside. You see he goes hips to hands. We talk about hips to hands. You load up, everything's tight. Arms aren't out. Arms, everything's tight in here. And he does a great job of what we just call, we've engaged, we've targeted, and now we're rolling. Feet chase your hips. Simple, simple concepts. Run, 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 run. Finish him over the pile. Love it. Now we have a slip look with 94, so he's going to gain ground. This, if you're, a, if you're the right tackle, let's talk about the right tackle for a minute. If you have a slip look on an outside zone or a toss play, <clears throat> and you have a tight five technique, you should think about get your first step down, and on your second step, you the right tackle should think about punching a hole right through 94's chest. Second step strike. Why? Because you can absolutely tee off. Nothing changes. I mean, your demeanor, though, you can know that you have an inside bumper. If this man steps inside, you're, nothing changes for you. You just hit him with one hand instead of two. But if he widens with you, if he stays there, man, you are going to put your heart and soul into knocking this guy punching a hole through his chest with both hands, hands inside. That is the, this is where really good players make a lot of great plays. When they get these inside bumpers, when they get these double teams and they know they're protected, they can come off and really do damage. Now what Lindstrom does right here, wins with his first step, second step down. And now again, he's winning inside hands and just continues to drive. The way that this guy wins with hands and pass pro in the run game and his the idea of rolling, feet chasing hips, our elite, elite level. That's why he's playing at the level he's at. See the motion, first step. And they've got this guy turned. You know, for me, we watch the right tackle. Right tackle takes a big second step, right? And so what that does is it allows the defender to kind of turn and try to wash him wide, 
right? So he's not – obviously the defender's not trying to get turned, but he knows now. 94 knows that – most likely because of that second step of the tackle, he's not going to actually be able to wheel on him. So they're going to try to drive and flatten this guy out. Chris does such a great job of burying his head between the tackle and the defensive player and just running his feet. And they end up all piled up on the ground because again, the guy loves to finish end up splashing him. Love it. You look at a pass pro. I want to, I want to mention this again. I have no idea how these plays actually do. I just know, you know, it doesn't matter if this was a one yard gain or one yard loss to me. What we're looking at is are the behaviors right over and over these very, very basic behaviors, these very, very basic movements. Are you doing the right stuff over and over? If you are, you have a chance to be really successful at any level. So while his second step is out, so his base is is probably wider than he wants to be. One thing that you have to appreciate here is his push is immediate. It's extended. And because he snaps to extension, he stops momentum immediately with his defensive tackle. Right? Hands are inside. You see a lot of guys' hands outside in this situation. They're trying to grab one. You know, maybe they're trying to stab with one, grab with the other. This guy's super confident with his hands, always getting extension. And what guys don't realize, I think, at this level now, at, at this in this time that we're in, is you don't have to grab. You can punch and extend and keep that guy away, and you can recover if they try to wipe, if they try to get to a side. The extension is what allows you to recover, allows you to allows you to take an edge off their rush. See that first step? Gain ground. And now this is just as important as we talk about first up all the time and gaining leverage. Second step, one thing that a lot of – you see a lot of NFL athletes now, and I think a lot of coaches are just coaching this now, is they're kind of shuffling into everything. And by shuffling, I mean – let me go back to the here real quick. By shuffling, I mean if your feet are like this and you're trying to – uh, reach or drive block, you'll take that first step. And that second step just kind of comes laterally. In other words, we're not gaining ground on your second step. So it's like, it's like one, two, and we haven't really gained ground. So we're not accelerating anymore. When you, when you are square, you're not accelerating, you're accelerating, you're in an accelerating position when you're, you have, you have distance vertically between your feet, right? So from a mentality standpoint, well, from a mechanical standpoint, that does something to you. But because you can see the white of his backside right foot, you can see that he's trying to gain ground with his second step and strike with that second step and have momentum with that second step. That's it. It doesn't seem like a big deal. It seems intuitive to, you know, if, if you had somebody who wasn't a football guy watching this, you'd go, well, yeah, of course. But in football, for some reason, we've allowed them to kind of shuffle into a lot of these blocks and try to wrestle through. Lindstrom, what I love is he's going back to the basics, running on his track, second step strike. And then because he can do that, does another great job of finishing, pushing the guy, you know, 10, 15 yards downfield. Phenomenal job. So we have a short set. And listen, you know, I was just talking to a friend of mine. I'm not necessarily a proponent, especially at the tackle position of short set anymore. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're really good at one thing, don't try to do something else that you don't, you haven't done 10,000 times before, right? Because it's just, you're learning something new in a, in a competitive environment with millions of people watching. It's not worth it, right? He's obviously practiced a lot. One thing that he does is he replaces his feet very well. He closes the gap very well. And because he's so good with his hands and body position, it just is resetting the area of confrontation, he's ready for confrontation because that's really the biggest thing. Are you getting to your real estate spot or control so you can control the terms of confrontation? Are you ready for confrontation? In this scenario, because of the speed he plays with, because of his hands, because how he marries his hands and his feet together, Chris is actually in great kind of body position to engage in confrontation before this defender is ready. I'm up. And he just stabs both hands inside again. You see his feet are in a position where, yeah, they're probably turned a little bit more than he wants. Because he struck, he he wanted to get that second step down as he was coming forward, but he's going to be able to recover because he punches, 
extends with those hands. And again, he just keeps it centered the entire time, keeps the guy on the line of scrimmage. Great job. He's down, first lineman down, running into the pile. Love it. What I want to show, I think, on these next one or two is that he doesn't always win with his hands. Nothing's always perfect. He redirects here. He sets – one more time. So he sets back. Probably took one step more than he wanted to. But instead of trying to go back towards the line of scrimmage, he's going to drop that left foot and create space. And that creating space allows you – to extend your arm, allows you to extend your inside or your outside arm, and it allows you to have a brace. So now that distance is, again, covered so that that defender can't get into your chest. So you can see that he has his right hand inside here. He's in. He's one with body position. He's right in front of, uh, of the defender. The defender can work on the bull now, and now his, it's his responsibility to be able to separate from that defender get space between their chests because the defender wants to get into your chest, get tight and bull, pull those pads up, choke you in the neck and bull that and bull that uh, the guard back. The guard needs to be able to separate and get extension. He does that here with his right arm actually at the end and stop momentum. And then I think we have one more here. And I just wanted to show, you know, we talk about a lot, um, about how we, I see a lot of guys just popping up and they're just almost vertical and they're sitting in this very quad dominant position. And if you look at the best players in the game right now, you look at the Trent Williams, you look at the Laramie Tunzels, you, you look at you know Joe Thomas when he was playing, you look at Chris Lindstrom right here. There is an athletic position that mimics a linebacker, a rugby player, a basketball player, a tennis player. You live in an athletic position, shoulders over knees, over toes, Look at the right guard here. That's an athletic position, as opposed to a lot of these other players are straight up and down. You can see the, the right tackles. You can see the his body position. He's he's backing up. His, his hips are kind of underneath him and not behind him in the hip hinge position. Chris is in a great hip hinge position. That's all we're looking for. We're not looking for him to necessarily be bent over. We have this no numbers mentality where we don't want to give a clean shot at our numbers. And he's doing a good job of that. He does that both with his hip hinge position, but he also does it because he keeps his hands tight, hips to hands idea, hands inside. So when you look at him, you just kind of see in the top of his numbers and shoulder pads, hands underneath. You're not looking at this big target in his stomach and his chest. So the guy gets a good bull here, but he's really winning with his body position. So his feet are too wide, not a great set, but because he gets that, it's not a great uh, set from a footwork standpoint. You don't want your feet to be that wide. And part of that is because the guy's kind of made an inside move or a move down the middle. So it's very natural for it to happen. But because he's not catching, because he's just working those hands inside and trusts himself to be able to punch and extend, snap and extend, stop momentum, he can still operate with kind of imperfect footwork, he can reset. He's still winning with hands. So now you don't feel good about his feet, but you feel great about his hands. And because you feel great about his hands, pretty comfortably he's going to be able to finish this block out, right? So even though it's not as pretty as some of the other things I showed, the important thing to understand is basic movements win your 1v1 matchups. Get really good at your first and second step. Be in a great body position, position, shoulders over knees over toes. We're just talking about hip hinge positions. Be an athlete. Target your hands have to win. Inside hand, outside hand, have to win. Snap and extend. And especially in the run game, when you think about roll, feet chase hips, man. Feet chase hips. Get downfield. Get your guy off the screen or push him over somebody else. Push over the pile. That's how this guy just made his, I think, his first Pro Bowl absolutely deserving and the reason he's doing it is not because he's 325 pounds has a 700 pound bench press runs a four six this guy is 307 pounds six foot four he is a good athlete he's not he's not a magician he's not a great athlete he is a technician he is a guy that works extremely hard you can see he just pays a ton of attention to his uh, his craft and has takes a lot of pride in his ability to finish every single play his extension is elite 
His extension is elite. It's something for coaches to really look at and celebrate because we are spending a lot of time with guys practicing, punching in here, holding guys in here, holding med balls, driving, doing all this stuff in here. It, it, I'm just telling you, mechanically, that makes no sense. You're losing power. You're losing momentum. There's too much leakage, energy leakage here as opposed to being extended. Hope you guys enjoy that. Block Party will have a uh, – on my block preview of divisional round this weekend coming up. I'm going to have Mike Flanagan on tomorrow. Pretty excited about that. But until then, enjoy. Hit me up on uh, Twitter, MikeWall68, Process to Perform on Instagram. Uh, subscribe and uh, rate these videos for me, and we'll talk to you soon.